In this tutorial, we'll learn how to create bubbles in Blender, using particle physics and some suitable shaders. And the best thing about this is, it works in almost any version of Blender, it's simple and easy. So let's say, we want to create bubbles from the tip of this nozzle. We'll start by adding a UV sphere to this composition, and then we'll resize it, to make it smaller in size. It's important to place it perfectly at the place, where you want the bubbles to get generated. Now, we'll create the bubbles using a particle system for the sphere, so go to this particle settings, and add a new particle system. The particle settings can be customized from here, and this number will determine the total number of particles, that will be created by this particle system, so it depends on the total duration of this system. The duration of our main animation is 400, so let's also change this end frame number to 400, so that we get bubbles here for the entire animation. And for 400 frames, an ideal number for the particles can be just 100. Then we will even change the lifetime value to the same 400, so that the bubbles don't disappear until the end of the animation, but you can also kill them earlier. If we now run the animation, we'll see that the particles are simply falling down due to gravity. This gravity is defined in the scene tab, and it has got a negative value which works downward. But we want the bubbles to float like this, so the gravity has to work upward, which means we need a small positive value, but if we change this gravity, it will impact all other physics simulations in your scene. So instead, in the particle settings, we have a section called field weights, and it has got a field called gravity. Here, we'll enter a very small, negative number. This number will get multiplied by the primary gravity force, which is minus 9.8. So we'll get a very small positive value for the final gravity force. Then the second problem is, the particles are coming out with a high velocity. In the particle settings, we have a section for this, called velocity. Here, we can see that a default value is used for the normal velocity, we'll remove this completely. But we want the bubbles to come out with a velocity in this direction, which is our positive x-axis. So we'll use a small value for the initial velocity in the x-direction. But we don't want this velocity to be constant for all the particles, we want the particles to come out from the nozzle with a random velocity, somewhere around this value. So let's insert a keyframe for this value, and then we have to open the graph editor from here. If you are unable to see any such graph here, please ensure that your object is selected in the outliner. Now for this graph, go to the modifiers tab, and add a modifier called noise, with the default values. Now back to the viewport, if we run the animation again from the beginning, we'll see that the particles are nicely floating in the air, just as we wanted. And we can add one more improvement to these bubbles, under the physics section, we can increase this Brownian value, to say 0.3. It will cause the particles, or the bubbles to spread in some random directions when they go up. You can do a further experiment with this value, but a higher value can make it unrealistic. Now let's run this again, and we'll see that the bubbles will scatter naturally, and beautifully. But we need to make them look like actual bubbles, so we need to focus on their material, once the physics part is done. So let's go to the rendered view mode, and we'll unhide a floor for this scene, which we have added beforehand. Then let's add another UV sphere here, to create the actual bubble material. We won't show this UV sphere at all in the animation, it will just work as the model for our bubbles, or the particles. We can rename the sphere to say bubble, so that we can easily refer to this when needed. Then let's open the shader editor, and click on the new button. By default, we'll get a principled BSDF and a material output node. We can remove this principled BSDF, and add two other shaders, one of them should be transparent BSDF, because we need transparency for the bubble material, and let's add a glossy BSDF. Then we need to connect these two shaders, so we also need a mix shader. We are creating a basic node tree for our bubbles, you can use a more complicated shader for colorful reflections, like a rainbow effect for soapy bubbles. Now, scroll down in the material properties tab, and change this blend mode to alpha blend, and also change the shadow mode to either none, or alpha hashed. Please ensure that the show backface option is turned on. And we need one more node here, this is an interesting node called Fresnel, it can detect the edges. We need to connect this node to the mix factor of the mix shader, and let's change this IOR value to say 1.2. So we get a basic transparent material that looks like a water bubble, and we can fine-tune some values for the glossy part, like this color can have full brightness, for pure white. And this roughness can be set to 0.1, later in this tutorial we'll also show you how to set up these nodes for the cycles engine. 
So we are done with the model object for our bubbles, let's go back to the timeline editor, and we can display it as a perfectly smooth sphere, by adding the shade smooth option. Now let's select this original sphere which is emitting the particles, and in the particles tab, scroll down to the section called render. First we have to change this render as, to the object option. Then in this object field, we need to select the model object, or the bubble. So the particles will now look like this bubble, but I think they are looking quite small in the size, so we'll change the scale factor in the particles tab to say 0.1. And we'll hide this model object in the viewport, as well as in the render. But we cannot hide this emitter sphere, because if we do so, the bubbles will also disappear, so we cannot hide it. But we can reduce its size to bare minimum, let's say we change it to 0 0.001. Now the original sphere won't be visible, we will only see the bubbles, exactly as we need. The bubbles may not be clearly visible since we are in the viewport, but they will appear very clear when we render, so no need to worry. Our camera setup is like this, and if we render it, we'll get an outcome like what we saw in the beginning of this tutorial. If you want to know how to use a blurred background that you see in this video, and something that makes it even more appealing, you can refer to our tutorial on that subject, the link is given below. Finally, let's say we want these bubbles to disappear, once they hit an obstacle like this wall, which we added to this scene. So we need to select this object, then in the physics tab, we need to enable collision physics for this obstacle. Then select the bubble object, and in the particle properties, scroll down to the section called defection, under physics. Here, we have to enable this beautiful option, called die on hit. Now if we run it once more, the bubbles will immediately disappear, once they hit this target object. It will be clearly visible in the solid view mode, we can easily see how the bubbles disappear once they come close to this obstacle, but the rendered view is slow due to the viewport limitations. And before you render it finally, you can bake the particle physics from this cache section, under the particles tab, it will ensure that the particle physics is stable during the rendering process. The output will be completely free from any lag that we saw in the viewport. And this output is created in EV, if you want to use cycles instead, you can use a node tree like this for the bubble shader. So that's all for today, I hope you find this tutorial useful or handy, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.